Welcome back to part two of the elephant versus the T-Rex, deciding who the ultimate winner is of this prehistoric battle. Got my freaking Goji Center sweatshirt on, I'm all ready for battle. I put my money on the elephants. Number I'm really eight, hoping I'm right. Weapons. It's imaginary money, but Studying still. <laughs> this category will be interesting, given that we are in fact comparing the effectiveness between the most powerful bite of any land predator against the largest set of teeth in the animal kingdom. I feel like those tusks are these just better weapons, you know? Unnecessary. They comprise one of the most renowned dental sets in the fossil record. I feel like such a traitor going against the T-Rex. It's like my favorite dinosaur tattooed all down my arm. I have the T-Rex skull. I, I see it every time I look at my hand. And I went against the family. Measuring up to six inches from the base of the crown, deeply rooted into the jaw with roughly the same length as the top, and having rectangular serrations That's creating folds insanity, of dentin. Bro. These most definitely needed to be robust since they were the business end of the most devastating bite forces in history. But how strong? PSI 12,500 pounds, pounds is a metric that can highly fluctuate depending on how many teeth are piercing any given surface. Gnarly. PSI will increase in certain areas of the jaw. In the T-Rex's case, we are looking at figures from 8 to 10,000 PSI. Where the hell did it went? 12,500 pounds. This is what I thought it was. I just realized I don't know what a PSI is. And I'm gonna sneeze. And if the T-Rex gets a oh. good grip and is given time to crunch down for long enough, this could go up to 12,000. For reference, this is enough force to crunch through the hood of a small car. Or if we take a more graphic route, this is enough to effortlessly bite a cow in two. Gnarly! T-Rex scat Woo! and remains of injured prey back this up with remarkable detail. This kind of crap is why not only do those kids piss me off in Jurassic Park because they're annoying, but that scene where it freaking breaks down the window and they're holding it up with their hands, their little kid hands, just pushing back this T-Rex. The entire CP should have ate those freaking kids. T-Rex was capable of crushing skulls, cracking ceratopsian frills, and crunching hadrosaur bones. This is without that mentioning is its powerful neck, which allowed the Rex to rip flesh, tendons, and bones right off the ligaments. As powerful as this was, however, this bite did come with some limitations. Note that the optimum biting angle of a T-Rex was at around 28 degrees. I was going to say this. How's it going to get its mouth around the elephant? open its mouth wider and then attempt to clamp, the bite force would end up getting taxed due Ooh. to the muscles already being stretched too wide, limiting these bites to narrower areas such as the neck of a dinosaur or another animal's limbs. How does this compare to the paleo's tusks? Yeah, where are you going to bite starters, on the paleo? Let's reiterate the fact that these aren't your typical set of tusks. These were the largest and heaviest to ever exist. Deep rooted in the skull of the paleo, similar to modern day elephants, but differs in that these were straighter, giving it the name straight tusked elephant. These had many uses, such as digging, breaking down trees, displays of power, and of course, combat. But how do elephants use tusks? These smart animals would make use of precise fencing and goring maneuvers seen in their modern day relatives. The elephant will lower its head to allow these tips of the tusks to penetrate. Once puncturing the opponent, these animals will proceed to raise their heads to push the tusk deeper. As if they know that the deeper the wound, the more fatal. Gnarly, they're in that this, animal, though. Jesus! To provide a rough numerical estimate of how much force is inflicted from the tips of the paleo's tusks, we resort to the square cubed law using the African elephant as a base model to calculate the mass of the head, neck muscles, and upper body, pushing all its forward momentum to these tips. It's a shame they have to keep uh, freaking elephant, elephant tusks in Africa so short so poachers don't get them. I, I stuttered saying that. The result would be an impact that strikes at about 8,702 PSI. That's crazy. But what if the paleo was moving at top speed? At 4.5 meters per second, this jumps up to a staggering 26,000 PSI. That's insanity, this, bro. It was a perfect hit. But if this tusk was particularly sharp and if the Rex was moving towards the tusk, the force would be even greater. Doesn't even, even need to be sharp, but that's, was that's not strength moving, at all. The T-Rex's skin wouldn't be enough to stop one tusk from sinking deep into a flat surface area, such as its soft belly or leg muscle. However, if the T-Rex manages to land a good bite to the paleo, this creature would likely get handicapped if the Rex is given enough time to crush down into its femur. A bite to the neck and I 
guess yes, that is a fair trade-off. point as well. To properly give this edge, we must consider the probability of these two successfully using these weapons against each other. How the hell is he going to get that elephant's that neck, the though? There's just no chance. land a bite on the paleo's limbs, it will have to first outmaneuver an animal that can already rotate really quickly. And if it aims for the neck, it will have to first avoid getting hit by tusks that can bring down a large animal with one hit. And after, hope it doesn't get trampled by an already moving paleo. I feel like you will really immediately trample. This guy is not going to get brought down with just one bite. The paleo also has it somewhat difficult. Accurately finding the belly of the rex will not be easy due to its superior agility. Note that in this fight, both of these animals will always have their heads facing each other. So it is inevitable that these two weapons, tooth and tusk, will clash in order to reach each other's weaknesses. I feel like it doesn't need to get it in there. It just needs to knock the rex over and then get it in there. The winner of this edge will have to wait a little longer. Oh, it's intense. now time to find out what happens when tooth meets tusk. Number 8.5, Tooth versus Tusk. Wait, that's An adult T-Rex of these proportions will already be accustomed to battling horned dinosaurs and is well aware of the damage that these can inflict. In response, the T-Rex would sometimes bite the horns in an attempt to break them, as to mitigate the damage done by them and reduce the probability of them piercing deep. Except Dude, now, the amount of flesh in that broken off horn was so disturbing, oh my god. These aren't keratin-layered horns like those of a Triceratops. We are talking about dentin and enamel. These two organic materials are the most resistant found in any animal. With I call enamel bo- having I call malarkey. points of 384 uh, my enamel. and dentin at 297. I wish I knew what these scientific diameters meant. Much higher than bones 115 megapascals. This is important megapascals. because elephant tusks are made of almost pure dentin. 2.5 times harder than bone. The ends of these are tipped with enamel, which does wear off with age. The end result is a it. tusk that is most <laughs> difficult to break. In this fight, the T-Rex will identify these are the primary threat, meaning that these must be destroyed, bringing us here. If the Rex manages to clamp its jaws around one, we find that this jaw opening is within the comfortable range of the Rex's biting angle, securing the strongest bite possible. But not only that, the reduced amount of teeth used to bite and smaller surface area to bite on means higher PSI. I think we're playing a pretty big risk that the T-Rex doesn't have any cavities right now or it's not biting hard at all. If just 16 teeth manage to press into the tusk, we have readings that would estimate higher than 26. 6,000, just right about where you need to pierce dentin. But well, that's damn, assuming dude. this tusk remains perfectly still. The which scientific breakdown is absolutely insane. We must insane. also account for the fact that dentin is a bit flexible, so this will bend before it cracks, making even breaking dentin this existed. in one single bite extremely difficult, even for the Rex. So, will the teeth be able to disarm the paleo? The answer is yes. <gasps> and no. Whoa. Once the Rex sinks its teeth, the force emitted by its bite will have been strong enough to crack, but the constant movement of the paleo and strength behind its swings would most likely prevent this the Rex epic, from crunching through. Photo. However, this does mean that this tusk is compromised and likely to break in the midst of combat. The edge comes down to probability. The chances of the T-Rex getting past the tusks are really low, given the size and area covered by each swing, meaning that in this battle, the T-Rex will get hit before it ever kills the paleo. If it does get past the tips, the elephant will resort to blunt hits from its body and trampling, shrugging the T-Rex away, forcing it to risk life and limb once again facing these tusks. For this reason, whoever wins the edge will be a matter of circumstance, depending on other factors discussed in this battle analysis, leaving this to the simulator to determine. For now, it will remain as a draw. Another undecided, this has never happened before. Number nine, auxiliary weapons. What, I what never else understand do what these that means. monsters bring to the arena? I guess In feet, the T-Rex's case, stopping. we have a set of two arms tipped with two claws, which were suspected to be used for gripping prey while bringing it down. These are by no means weak, being able to pick up 440 pounds each. 
But will these be useful in this fight? Considering that the Paleo wouldn't have been much bigger than anything the T-Rex hunted down and taller, the Quetzals using these and to latch onto the side of the Paleo would be more detrimental than helpful. Putting it in an awkward position to bite down Look on the Paleo and even paws. putting it in an unstable posture. Apart from its two claws and bite, the T-Rex does not have much to offer in terms of weapons. Maybe other it's than tail? sheer mass. But as seen earlier, this is heavily bypassed by the Paleo. Speaking of which, this animal brings a very useful trunk to the battlefield. Oh, I forgot about Being trunks. The what the hell? the most iconic trait of Proboscideans, this trunk would have I don't been know how composed of more than 40,000 <laughs> facial muscles, serving as an elongated upper lip, making this thing deceptively powerful. Consider that small Asian elephants can lift over 660 pounds. This is a messed up video. A chained up elephant doing this guy's lifting. Lift it yourself, you scrawny little bastard. Scaling up to the paleo and keeping in mind that an animal scaled up to double the size. I was going to say, can't it just lift the T-Rex up? By 30 to 80%, we find that the paleo would probably be able to pick up objects weighing at between 1,100 to 1,400 pounds. Those chains around this the elephant bother me so much. This is not enough to pick up a Rex, but it it sure does supply enough force for a good grip. Combine this with the strength of the neck and forelimbs, and we're talking about a creature that could grab a hold of the Rex's limbs or tail and severely unstable the Rex. What if he just Upon starts dragging glance, him, bro? This trunk would be an unfamiliar body part for the T-Rex, since it would have never encountered anything similar to this before, and wouldn't register it as a threat until it sees it in action. The T-Rex would probably more. think it's a wiener. Elephants are notorious for using Using their feet to trample foes to the ground, rolling them mercilessly in combination with their trunk and tusks, stepping on them, rupturing any organs that find itself underneath the elephant. If that thing gets if a step down, it's over, the dude. Rex loses its balance and falls, it runs the risk of getting mercilessly crushed by the paleo. See, this exact image, the freaking thing, like the tusks just dipping over, this is what I pictured at the beginning when I chose the elephant. For this reason, the paleo gets a clear edge when it comes Your to a Damn weapons. right it does. We are very close to unleashing these two in the arena, but before that, we must really quickly run over some weaknesses. Number 10, vulnerabilities. Both of the combatants what were heavy weights built to withstand anything the animal kingdom threw at them. In the T-Rex's case, the most dangerous animal to confront would either be a full-grown bull triceratops or another T-Rex. Same with the opponent. In the Paleo's case, the most dangerous creature would be another similarly sized specimen of its own kind. Pretty much what because I go through. Because they would face their own kin, most of the injuries inflicted on each other would be inflicted on the head or upper torso, as to defend the more vulnerable areas behind the head. The butts. So, to answer who wins the edge here will not only mean who has a greater weakness, but also who is more capable of defending them. The T-Rex was one of the most resilient animals of all time, with over half of adult T-Rex specimens displaying battle scars inflicted by other T-Rexes. These insane. injuries admittedly wouldn't be inflicted at full force, given that these weren't meant to be lethal. However, this does mean that the head of a T-Rex could with stand a lot of heavy blows. Yeah, it's like one of the toughest skull skulls in the world. was reinforced around the eyes, brain case, and jaw, protecting the throat, meaning that this animal wouldn't be knocked out as easily as other similar-sized animals. Combining this resistant head with its improved agility, the T-Rex would most likely place its head between the tusks and its own vulnerable soft belly, knowing very well that one blow could end the fight. Pretty the much Rex is in the this thing. battle would be relatively safe from a lethal blow as long as it stays in this posture. This changes if the Rex is toppled over. The Paleo, on the other hand, is taller than the T-Rex, making any attacks from above inexistent. Despite this, this Paleo's neck is within attainable range for the Rex. If the Rex is lucky and manages to reach the neck, a bite held long enough would be catastrophic for the Paleo. This is Note, literally however, the only way the elephant could possibly short, lose muscular this. muscular neck whose purpose is to hold one of the heaviest heads of all time. Getting to this would mean putting itself at the mercy of the tusks and its trampling maneuvers. 
maneuver. You just gotta a risk more it for the biscuit. A target would be the legs, as these would comfortably fit inside the jaws of the rex. A back leg. It's gotta enough, be a back this leg. This would inflict a critical blow to change the tide of battle. But one bite is not enough, and the paleo is not here to take any. Just like the rex, the elephant will try to keep its head between those jaws and its own vulnerable spots. Because of this, we find that both methodologies of defense are the exact same for both of these creatures, making this a close final draw for both combatants. There's so many ties between these two. They're so form, beautifully there equal. There is one last critical factor that will weigh heavily in this fight. The X Factor. I love the X Factor. In this battle scenario, both the T Rex and the Paleo will have seen each other for the first time, which means that a very big aspect to take into account in this simulation is unfamiliarity with each other. Ooh. And this begins before they even lock eyes on each other. Recall love that at first both sight. of these animals will sense each other's presence from miles away, either through hearing or smell. A T Rex seeing something that smelled like the tiny animals it lived around growing to the these gargantuan proportions would be alarming, causing a lag in strategy development. That's this so true. Unfamiliarity That's so would dang only true. worsen once it effortlessly gets shoved around by an animal of similar size but of much greater weight. The Paleo would have never faced anything as large as a T Rex. But even if the Paleo is a bit taller than the Rex and around the same overall length, this animal will assume that the T Rex is around as heavy as itself, even though it isn't. In the mind of the Paleo, big animals such as itself will not display the level of agility the T-Rex is capable of. That's also kind of pretty true. Damn. Will be heavily so determined much thought. By their problem solving and decision making skills. We are now ready Crazy to unleash these Crazy amount of thought goes into these, dude. They have so many good points with all arena. this stuff. The powerful Tyrannosaurus Rex. Oh my God, Rex moment of truth. My freaking palms are sweaty. Agility, faster moving Woo! speeds, winning the edges in both stamina and senses. The Paleoloxodon wins the edge in having more mass than its opponents, better armor, and winning the edge in problem solving and auxiliary weaponry. Both of the combatants take a highly contested draw in primary weaponry and ability to defend their vulnerable points. I'm still voting the for the elephant, man. I'm still prepared. going for it. The combatants ready. Coming up, the Tyrannosaurus Rex versus Paleoloxodon Nematicus. I'm gonna have a heart attack. It's all been leading up to this. I drank too much Red Bull before this. Now my palms are sweaty. Note that the hypothetical confrontation both would seek to avoid encountering full-grown individuals of either species. Come on! Never get to read it all. Oh, damn! Sleeping on the job. If I was a T-Rex, I'd live in constant fear of bugs getting into my little reptile ear holes. No one's got pliers for like 500 million years, or 50 million years. How the hell are you going to get those... Those bugs out here, I guess that's why you have little animals that live around big ones. They eat the insects off them and stuff. But then you just got a small animal you're eating littler ones out of your ears. I suppose that's all doctors are, really. They just don't eat the bug. Realistically, I feel like the elephant would or the T Rex would realize this isn't worth, like, risk versus reward. Like, sure, I gotta eat, but I also gotta live. But if it's starving and desperate, it doesn't have the the option to turn down food. <gasps> oh boy. What if one of them just gets one shot and after like a 40 minute build up, someone just gets one shot of that'd be so funny. I would laugh, I would enjoy that. That'd be comically hilarious. Pick it up! <laughs> Pick it up. Whoa! Mother crapper! They both got a minor leg scratch. T-Rex is near the knee, but I don't think it's deep enough to have any effect on his movements. He wore lipstick to the fight. Or maybe it's blood, I don't know, it's probably lipstick. 
Whoa, for God, oh, Jesus! Oh, I'd leave right there. Bro, it looks like the Joker. Look at that cranial, cranial head. Oh, God. It's like watching Voldemort's wand break. No way. Strangle him. Choke him out with your big face wiener. What am I saying right now? Oh, it's over now. He's exposed his balls. Oh, man. He's turning his insides into mush. Now he's gonna turn. Oh, it's over. It's done. There's no, there's, there's nothing. There's no coming back from that. It was always a relatively a obvious win. In my head, at least. Comes out as the victor in it's this just battle. so much bigger. In so a 1v1, no way. did the way. Paleo win? Because there was the only one T-Rex. The contributed heavily in this fight were mass, intelligence, and both weapon categories. And the cutest the little tail I've ever seen. The ambush in this fight was nullified due to both creatures' senses, allowing them to notice each other from very far away. Upon locking into each other, both territorial creatures make it clear that none of them are backing away. Challenge accepted. Did. The Paleo, thinking that this similarly sized Rex is just as heavy, winds up a fast charge to properly counter the mass of its opponent. The Rex, facing similar scenarios against horned dinosaurs, knows what to do. Honestly, this all makes perfect agility, sense to me. surprises the Paleo by avoiding the charge and quickly targeting the hind leg of the mammal. That was but clean. the Paleo does not stand idle. Its thicker skin does absorb most of the initial force, but having never felt anything like this bite in the past, the Paleo quickly quickly leverages its trunk and tusks to get a good hold of the Rex's rear body, attempting to shove it back. But to its surprise, the T-Rex turned out lighter than expected. The Rex, surprised at the density it was over of its right opponent there, man. and the paleo of the Rex's agility, both regain steady footing. They just now learn something new about each other. In response, the elephant begins to swivel its head to ensure he has the Rex in its sight of vision. The Rex tests the paleo by lunging forward, but the reach of these tusks manages to injure the head of the Rex. No big deal, just a little more careful next time. The objective now is to get past those tusks to try to get to the softer limbs, but the so paleo must easily keeps the, the tusks. Rex at bay with its wide swings. At this point, it comes down to whoever makes the first mistake. The angry Paleo lunges forward, and the Rex dodges and decides to disarm the Paleo by firmly holding on to the tusks. Success! Upon feeling the teeth sink, the Paleo panics and violently shakes the T-Rex off. The weakened tusk breaks upon hitting the ground, but in doing so, it manages to hold the T-Rex for a brief moment. That was so Seeing gnarly. That the strong reptile is stepping backwards, escaping the grip, the Paleo quickly pushes the Rex backwards, making it lose its footing. Never fall the back. Rex Never expose weakness. And the Paleo wastes no time. Pure mass, tusk, brains, and muscle prove to be too much for this T-Rex. This is a freaking these epic animals battle, did dude. Live at the same time at the same place. Over time, we would have encountered various scenarios. See this? Who would have killed them for sure? Rivalries between predator and prey. Both animals would have, over time, adopted strategies to bring each other down, using more effective methods of ambushing, pack hunting, or just simply repeatedly targeting the opponent's weakness. Today, the Paleo achieved the seemingly impossible, taking down the most powerful land predator to ever exist. Special thanks to our team of researchers, animators, and artists that helped bring this episode to life. This was such a beautiful freaking video. Everyone subscribe to Koji Center, obviously, because they make some of the greatest videos I've ever freaking seen. I do love T-Rexes more than anything. I felt bad going against it, but logically in a 1v1, the much bigger one's gonna win. L realistically, yeah, it would have been a couple T-Rexes versus an elephant if they were able to isolate one, and then it would have been a victory. Or maybe you just bite one real good, let it bleed out and get infected over a couple days, and then kill it or something. But either way, this was freaking awesome. But yeah, leave a like, subscribe for more. Subscribe to Goji Center, of course. Get yourself a Goji Center sweatshirt too, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>